Hi, and welcome back to another how-to video. My name is Ditex, CTO of DVS. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. While you're on our website subscribing, subscribe to PewDiePie, get your subscribers up over T-Series, that's what we need to see. We got your back. So this one, today we're gonna to take a look at the facial recognition access control terminal and how to program it through IMS 4200. We've just done a week of road shows, shown the product, absolutely love it, the feedback was great. And the only thing people wanna know is how to use it effectively and efficiently and how to program it. It's a very, very simple piece of kit to program. So we're gonna actually show you this one today. So it's a desktop version with a fingerprint and uh, live face recognition. But, if I take you outside, let's go for a walk in the office. It's exactly the same principle as using this one here. Um, they are the same, um, same principle anyway, so don't worry if you've got either or. But for purpose of testing and ease of use, we're going to show you that one. So, again, what we've got to do, subscribe to our YouTube channel and subscribe to PewDiePie. There we go. See you in a minute. Okay, welcome back to the video. So we have our terminal next to us, so I can show you how to program it. It has been activated before, but I'm gonna show you an interesting function. If you turn up the site and you don't have a copy of the 4200 or the database, how we can get the people that have been added out, interesting function. Uh, and I've also got the IMS 4200 open, as you can see. So we can see our device here on the network, and we will add this in. So we'll call it FaceRec Terminal. I know the password. I can export the group and click synchronize device time. Click add. That's added in and the device time is synchronized on there. So that's fantastic. Uh, if you click remote configuration, you do get all of the standard uh, SDK functions that you would get um, as if it was a back end device, NVR, DVR, camera, etc. added direct, so that's fine. So, next thing we're going to do is go to control panel. Uh, we're going to go to the access control module. And you can see here, I've added people, I've used this um, IMS 4200 on a recent installation. This is a new site. So, let's delete all of these people. So, we can select delete get rid of everybody so we're starting from a fresh done okay so the device so i've already let's get rid of the company done so we'll add an organization in you may already have one dvs hq add that in and no people in there so under device management you can see i've already got that device added here and you can see the device status, modify, remote configuration. So I could have done it from there. An interesting function you will see under here is get person. The get person function talks to the controller and gets the people that are stored locally in the face rack or whatever terminal that is. It could be the uh, biometric uh, fingerprint module. So we'll say get person. We'll select our device and click OK because it gives you a list of all the devices added. We've only got the one face rack terminal online currently. Click on OK. It's 100% done. Click close. Now you can actually see if I click modify, I was already actually in the database and my face and fingerprint have been connected um, to the module already. What we'll do is delete these two. That's a nice easy way. If you need to get the information of the people stored in there, add the device 4200, click get person, and it'll import that data into the IMS 4200. We're gonna do it um, from scratch. We're gonna add a person. So what we'll do is click on add. We'll give the person names, so that's uh, me, die tech. I am a male. My phone number. Date of birth. Place of birth. God's country. Email. 
You don't have to put these, they're not mandatory fields, only the one with the red asterisks are mandatory. But by putting this in, it creates a more fuller record. So if you need to do an investigation, you can pull those exact in details up. So what I can do now is I can take a photo or, or upload a picture for my record. I'm gonna take a photo and it should allow me to use my webcam. But when you do take photo, ah, because I'm using OBS screen capture, it's knocked that off. What we'll do is upload a picture. I have one here on my desktop. I saved earlier. There we go. There's me. Handsome devil. Okay, next thing we need to do is add a card number. So you can either use... This is a multi tech reader, so you can either use the MyFair 1K Prox cards, similar to this, or you can use the keyring fobs, which I'm going to use a keyring fob. So, what we're going to do is go under card, click add. It's a normal card, remark, first card. You don't have to put that in. Card password if you need it. We'll just put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in there. The effective period, so how when the user's valid to and from. The enrollment type, so the access control reader, card enrollment station, or manually input the card number. So we'll use access control reader or card enrollment station. I need to go and get the card enrollment station actually, so I'll go and do that uh, shortly. Um, in fact, let me go and do that now. Yeah, I'll go and do that now. Give me two seconds. Let me pause this and I'll go and get my USB card reader. Okay, so I've now got my USB card reader plugged in. So you can see the part number there. So we'll select from card. And it is the KF100 DE8. That one there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Save that, so that's done. So what we're gonna do now is click read. There we go, so you've read the card there. Stop reading. Plug that, plug this back in. Click okay. So now we've got the card number that belongs to this prox. They're ready for that. Next thing we need to do is do the fingerprint and the face picture. So we will click on a face picture and we're going to do local collection, remote collection or local uploading. We'll do remote collection and we'll use the actual station as the collection station. So we'll go remote collection, select device. Oh, it's not come online in a second. I have to wait. I have to unplug the... Uh, USB port for it to come online. So wait for that to come up. Okay, so the unit's online again now. So we go to remote uh, collection, we go select device, select the terminal, IP address, click OK, and we say collect. It'll now ask me to put my face on the terminal. You'll see there's a picture of a man, uh, say target, which I have to put my face in. So it saved the picture on there. So not a very great picture of me, but it has. I can recollect or delete it, or I can say OK. Next is my fingerprint. So I can go fingerprint. I can go remote collection or local collection. I don't have a USB enrollment, so I'll go remote collection again. Select device, select the terminal, click OK. Select which finger I want to enroll, and I'm going to enroll my right hand um, there, click on there, and it asks me to put my fingerprint in. Fingerprint again, and fingerprint again. So some it's two or three times. You can see there's medium quality. So I could say stop, and then delete, and go that one again. Remote collection. Yeah, let's do it again because uh, the quality was quite bad. Let's try that finger. I bite my nails, which is bad, I know. So 
So it's a better quality fingerprint now. Uh, so I can press stop. Uh, so my fingerprint and face are done and my card. So I've got my card, fingerprint and face. Next thing you have to do is, a lot of people miss this trick. You have to link the fingerprint and the face to the card record. To do that, you click link fingerprint. So you highlight it, select the fingerprint you want to link and click OK. And you do the same with face and just put the box around it. Uh, so they're both linked now and you can generate the QR code which I did a separate video on before for the QR code read for the uh, intercom. Um, now now I could technically click OK and it'll say now I can actually get the mouse back. So we've done that. So I've actually clicked on there, so I've got a fingerprint card all added in. Details, I can fill in more details there. Permission and attendance rule for time attendance. I'll do a separate video on that. What we need to do then is the schedule. So by default, there's the whole week schedule. We'll leave that, but you can make up your own schedule. Under the permission, um, we'll delete that permission. Click OK. And we'll add a new one in, so because that belonged to the old one. So permission name is DVS HQ. So under there, we've got me. That's the only person in. So I'm going to add that across. Okay, so we'll give it a permission name. We'll add myself over to that permission. I'm the only person in there. And the door, add that over, click on OK. It says apply now, we'll do that. Let it apply the changes. And close. So that's downloaded the data of myself to this unit directly. So you can add multiple permissions in there. But all we've done is sent myself and all of this data so far. So the face, fingerprint and card details. To that reader so what we can do now is under permit uh, under thing under the face rack terminal you'll have a few options so if you click on the main parent folder you'll see there enabled by default and then if you expand that you've got door one you can change the text on that and we'll call it face rack terminal save but you've got the, the actual entrance card reader one and exit card reader two. The entrance card reader is the face rack terminal itself. The exit card reader is a weak grand reader. You can connect to the rear of the unit by those connections, um, along with the door, uh, relay, door monitor, etc. Uh, so if you need uh, anti pass back read in, read out, time and attendance, stuff like that. There you can adjust all of the settings that are specific to that door and you've got like the face picture information so you've got the face recognition in an interval default two seconds but you can change the setting live face detection is enabled you can disable it we'll leave it enabled and you've got the face match security um, is set to high on both so what we can do now is and then you've got all of the other settings which I went through on a different uh, video anyway so we're happy with that we'll save that what we will do quickly is just check a couple of little things ignore what i'm doing yeah that's fine done that one permission yeah what we'll do is change the authentication type. So under card reader authentication, select that. You've got the face rec terminal there. Oh, expand it and you've got door one. So by default, you've got card and pass, fingerprint, card and finger, card and face, card and face, card face and fingerprint. So what you can do is click on configuration. There are all of the options you allowed and you can just simply add them across and they'll be added into this here so they're selectable there you go we're going to use card and face and fingerprint so it becomes a very high security technology so we'll select that copy to weak save that's done what you can do is have different um, authentication modes uh, for different time periods um, but each user so if you set this for the reader each user that needs to go through that door needs all of those 
different to fingerprint card on face in roll to get through it uh, you can't do it per person this is per door so we've saved that that's done what we can do now is i'll go and get the camera and it should need all three so as the unit's next to me let me just test it all right, so fingerprint authenticating failed so we'll go card please continue to authenticate fingerprint please continue to authenticate. and face done so all three needed to be um done for me to access that door i'll go and get the camera put it behind me and hopefully you can see uh how that operates let me just pause this okay so we'll do card authentication first please continue to authenticate then fingerprint please continue to authenticate. then face there we go so it's authenticated so face picture if i just do card on its own please continue to authenticate and then Please continue to authenticate. Again, you should see that working on there. So again, please continue to authenticate. Please continue to authenticate. Authenticated. There we go. So all three technologies are needed to get through that door. But you can change the mode. You could have it card, fingerprint, or face only, depending on how security conscious you are or what area that is going into. So that's quite secure using all three modes. What we'll do now is quickly show you how to link an event, so like a door authorised or door opened would then link through to the software so you can see when somebody accesses that area. So give me two seconds. Okay, hopefully that you've got the gist of that. I know it's very difficult to show all the te technology um, in a very brief video and then when the unit's external so you're trying to see the software and how the unit interacts. Hopefully we captured that. Apologies if it did take too long. What I want to quickly show you is the event linkage. So I have added a DVR, which is in the same room as we're in, into the IMS 4200. Now under event management, I can see on the left hand side, I've got the access control event. So I see my access control uh, unit here. Now I've got all these different event types. So I've selected like unlock door, normally open, um, etc. So all these different things. What I wanted to do with the client and then the camera of choice connected to it. So I click save, go to main view, as I'm an operator, if I go bad through this door now. Please continue to authenticate. Please continue to authenticate. So you've got there that tells you where it's from and the door was unlocked. So you can see me there. Hello. And then you can get the playback if you'd set that up. So it's just a way of linking the events like door force, uh, multiple authentication fail, things like that. So if you're a security operator, you're going to know about that straight away and you can action it. Hopefully you found that a use. I'm really sorry if it took too long of your time, but keep liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting. Thank you for all the support that you've given us and continue to give us. And don't forget, subscribe to PewDiePie. See you next week.